God is a jealous, jealous. God. Yep. Mm. This is not one of the ones that we like to necessarily <laughs> ponder or even completely understand because when we think of jealousy, you know, we think of human jealousy mm. is not a good thing. As a matter of fact, to be envious and to be jealous is not a, a virtue, it's a vice of sorts. But God says of himself that he is a jealous God. We read right here in the scripture, it is Exodus 34, 14. You must worship no other gods, for the Lord whose name, whose very name is jealous, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. That's the New Living Translation, and I love that. I was also thinking in Isaiah 42, verse 8, the Lord says, I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory, I will give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. God is so jealous over us as a husband over a wife or a wife or her husband. And it's not that possessive, I have to control everything about you and all you. It's he wants us to grow in this relationship of love with him. Mm -hmm. He yearns for us to come into this place of love with him that we don't desire anyone or anything more than we desire him. And um, I was thinking about a story, at least in my life, that I could... Uh, share with you all, there are many times when I have loved things more than I've loved the Lord, that he hasn't had first place in my heart like he should have always had. Speaking of my son, Christopher, he was uh, young, he had gotten married. We were in Hawaii and we were vacationing with him and his brand new baby, um, Stella, who was the joy and delight. It felt like in our lives that we were in a place of the greatest blessing. Things were settled. He was walking with the Lord. He had this beautiful family. Our ministry was great. Everything was great. And one night it was dark and I happened to be out by myself walking back to the condo that we were staying in. And it was the island of Hawaii, the big island, where they have very low light because they have a big telescope on the very top of the mountain so they can see the stars. So everything is very low light. And as I was walking back, it was the night before Brittany and Christopher and Stella were gonna fly home. And Greg and I were gonna stay a couple of days longer. And as I was walking back, I was overwhelmed with this deep sadness, this separation. Like I didn't want them to go, I wanted them to stay. This was so much fun. It was such a blessing. It was. Um, like I said, just probably the best time of our lives that we had them and everything was good. And as I was walking back, thinking about they're gonna get on a plane and they're gonna go home, go to their own house, we're gonna go to our house. This sense of separation that I just couldn't, couldn't keep him right here and, uh, and the family right there. And as I looked up at the stars that night, it was this overwhelming sense of awe you know, have you ever had that sense where God is almost overwhelming in his glory and his majesty? He's not your little best friend who's, you know, um, walking beside you in the valley of the shadow of death. He is altogether other, altogether so vast, so big, so completely glorious. And you feel this very, very small in, in his sight. And I heard as if I could almost hear it audibly because I was very sad and on the verge of tears. I have a, I have a problem saying goodbye to anybody in case you know. <laughs> yeah. I only cry at the end of the day. <laughs> Goodbyes are really hard for me. I think because when I grew up, we did a lot of goodbying. We traveled a lot and moved a lot as children. And, uh, but for them to leave, it was bigger in some way because I think the Lord wanted to show me something. And I heard so clearly the Lord say to me, am I enough if I took it all away? Would I be enough? Am I enough for you? Mm. I was like, wow. he's God. How could I say God is not enough? But in my heart, I was holding on so tightly to things I loved. And I prayed that night and I said, Lord, obviously you're not everything because I am so sad right now. I am so sad. So you are obviously not in the place that I need you to be. Christopher and Brittany and Stella, they're occupying some major place in my heart. And 
I turned to the Lord and I said, I want you to be enough. I want you to be enough. And he shared with me this picture that one day when I step into eternity, that I will stand before his throne and he will be my God. And I want to know him and that he possessed me all, every part of me, that all the good things that he has blessed me with are just blessings. They're not him or substitutes for him. But I think the idea that God is a jealous God and that he wants our hearts 100%. Mm-hmm. But things creep in, don't they? Yep. Yeah. Stuff creeps in. Life creeps in. And idols creep in. And though we might not have little card, little idols in our lives, there are things in our lives that perhaps mm-hmm. we hold on to for meaning, for value, for worth, for identity. Right. Those are the idols of our heart. And God is jealous over us. He's jealous over that. Right. I mean, when you stop and think about it, God is a jealous God. But what does that mean to you personally? How do you process that? Well, one thing I know he won't do is he won't remove the idol. He wants us to. Mm. Yeah. Because if he did that, then that would not be relationship. Mm. He may point them out to me. Mm-hmm. this is an idol in your life. You love this person more mm-hmm. than you love me. Mm-hmm. You want them more than you want mm-hmm. me. He points those things out, but he'll never remove them. Mm-hmm. And I say that because of Gabrielle. When Gabrielle went to heaven, I said, mm-hmm. Lord, was I making an idol of her? He said, if you were, I would not have removed mm-hmm. her because he wants us to understand that if we don't choose him, he's mm-hmm. not gonna force us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's not the kind of controlling God or controlling mate. Mm-hmm. He protects us, but he won't keep us from making the wrong choice. We can still choose wrong. Mm-hmm. He, he does point out those idols though. He, points he will them point out. them out. And it was the day that the Lord did take Christopher mm-hmm. to heaven. There was not that struggle. I think because I had sort of reconciled and he had called attention to the most lovely and beautiful thing we have on earth is our relationship with our family. Mm -hmm. And he had showed me that that was a gift from him, but I wasn't to desire the gift more than the giver. Mm -hmm. And on that day, I remember clearly thinking, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. And that God is still on the throne and he is with me and he is good. And he is my loving heavenly father. And he, he is jealous yeah. Yeah. over me. Yeah, I love that song. He is jealous he for me. Is. Loves like a hurricane. <laughs> I love that. I am a tree <laughs> bending beneath the weight of his. I like the sloppy wet know. kiss of that. <laughs> <laughs> At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.